Hey guys, in this video I want to work out a few examples of problems involving both static and kinetic friction to help us better understand how they work, what the difference between them is, and how to apply it. Let's check it out. So remember, if you pull with a force F on an object, so for example here, um, that force F has to overcome, has to be greater than the static friction, the maximum static friction, the threshold um, of friction for the object to accelerate. Okay? You have to overcome your static maximum static friction to accelerate. And in case the initial velocity was zero, that means that now that you have an acceleration, you would begin moving. Okay, So let's check this out. If your force, however, is not greater than the threshold, Fs max, your acceleration will be zero. Okay, So let's say if your force is less or equal to Fs max, then what's going to happen is your acceleration is zero. Acceleration zero means equilibrium, means forces are canceling, right? It means forces are canceling. Therefore, your actual friction, which will be static, but the actual amount of friction will be simply your F, because these two guys have to cancel, okay? For you to have an acceleration of zero. If your Fs max, let's say, was 40, and I pull with a 30, that's not enough, but friction cannot oppose me with 40 because then I would have 40 to the left, 30 to the right, this block would be moving, moving towards friction, which is crazy, right? What happens is that friction opposes me with just the amount of force that I am pulling with, okay? And that's because these two numbers have to cancel, these two yellow numbers over here have to cancel, so that my acceleration is zero, okay? So if you're not pulling hard enough, acceleration is zero, and the actual friction on you is the same as the pulling force, which here I call big F. If you are pulling hard enough, your acceleration will not be zero, and this means you're accelerating, so you're, you're certainly moving, um, and then that means you're actually going up against uh, kinetic friction. So if you pull with a force that is greater than Fs max, it means you're moving, um, you're accelerating to the right, and you're accelerating to the right, which means you have some sort of velocity. In this case, let's say you started from rest, so you're also moving this way. So friction would be this way, but it would be a kinetic friction. Okay, This would be a kinetic friction because you are moving. Okay, So it's important to point out that Fs max serves only for you to determine whether or not you're moving, um, but the actual friction will be either your pull, if you don't move, if you don't accelerate, um, or your kinetic friction if you do um, move. Okay, so let's work out some problems now. I'm going to do this first one. I want you guys to try um, this practice one over here. So a 10 kilogram block, a 10 kilogram block is at rest. The coefficients of friction are these two over here. And we're going to use for all these problems g equals 10 just so it's a little bit faster. Okay, so mk is 0.4, ms is 0.6. I want to know the maximum static friction that can act on the block. Maximum static friction that can act on the block is just fs max, which is mu static normal, right? I had this um, up here for you guys as well and mu static is 0.6 and then I just have to find normal. So if I have a block at rest, it looks like this, mg normal will equal mg, mg in this case the mass is 10 times gravity, I'm using gravity as 10, so 10, 10 is 100, so this is 100 as well and that's because this object has no um, acceleration the y-axis just sits there so the forces have to cancel okay so 100 is what goes in here and the maximum static friction this thing is capable of uh, or that could um, act on the block is just 60 okay just plug in plug and chug for part B I want to know the friction on the block if it was moving right so if the block was moving this means the velocity is not zero it has a velocity and I would then have kinetic friction, which is just mu k normal. And I already have these numbers. Mu k is 0 0.4. 
and normal is 100 so friction kinetic is just 40 newtons so if this object was moving it would have you would be going up against the friction of 40 newtons all right so what i want you to do now is to pause the video and try to figure this one out here practice one um i'm going to keep going hopefully you tried it and i have a five kilogram block on the floor so there's an mg of 50 okay using gravity as 10 to make it faster um, you figure out that it takes a force of 35 to get moving now force of 35 to get moving a horizontal force like this so force to get moving you need to overcome static friction to get moving so if it takes you a force of 35 to get moving that 35 is the static friction threshold so 35 to get moving is a way of telling that f s max is your 35 okay so i will and then i also tell you that it takes 25 to keep moving okay 25 to keep moving so the idea of keep moving is that there's some friction here you're moving let's say this way so there's a kinetic friction here and you want to keep moving right if there's kinetic friction and i don't pull on this block it's going to get slower and slower and slower but if i want to keep moving i need my f to cancel to exactly cancel my friction in other words i want my pulling force f to equal fk this means that they cancel the acceleration is zero and then this object keeps moving at the same pace so if i tell you that it takes 25 newtons to keep it moving that means that this is 25 right here and then that also means that this guy is 25 as well so i'm basically saying that fs max is 35 and fk is 25. now if i expand fs max which is mu static normal i am able to solve for mu static same thing here if i expand this into mu kinetic normal equals 25 i am able to solve for mu kinetic all i need to know is normal okay if you look at this block over here mg is going down with 50 there are no other forces in the y-axis so normal has to cancel out that 50. normal is 50 over here because of mg so i just have to plug this in n is 35 over um, i'm sorry mu norm mu static is 35 over normal which is 50 and this gives us a 0.7 and mu kinetic is 25 over normal which is 50 this gives us a 0.5 okay and that is the these two here are the two final answers hopefully you got it um, let me go on to example two so here it says you pull one block in example one right here with various horizontal forces f for each um, value of f fills the cell below so for each one of these values here i want to fill in these cells and see what's happening okay so this is a 10 kilogram block that is at rest right it says here it's at rest and the coefficients of friction are 0.4 and 0.6 Okay, so the initial velocity here is zero, and the coefficients of friction mu k is 0.4, and mu static is 0.6. And then I'm going to pull on it this way with various forces. Now the first force is zero, which means I'm actually not pulling at all. So if you don't pull, obviously this one's kind of silly; it doesn't move. Okay, what kind of friction is working up against it? Remember, if you're not moving, there's no kinetic friction. And static friction is a friction that is, in case you don't move, um, going up against your F, right? So let's say I pull with an F of 10, and that's not enough to move, um, then the static friction will exactly cancel that 10 right there, okay? So if I'm, not, if I'm pulling with zero, the friction that's opposing me is zero, which means it doesn't exist. So there's no friction, okay? None, or maybe like non-applicable, there's no friction here. Okay, and the actual friction against you is zero because there's nobody 
there's no friction going up against you. And the acceleration is zero as well because you don't move, everything just cancels. All right, now I'm being pulled with 30, okay? And by the way, I wanna, I wanna rework this here. Um, remind you that the kinetic friction on this, we calculated to be 40, and the maximum static friction, we calculated to be 60. So this means that for this object to move, you have to pull with at least 60. Here I'm pulling with 30. So I got a 30, and 30 is not enough to overcome 60, so this object will not move, okay? And it doesn't move because it's going up against static friction that prevents it from moving. How much static friction? It's going up against 30 newtons of static friction. Again, if I pull with 30, and it doesn't move, this thing has to oppose me with 30 so that they both cancel. This is not a 60 here. If this was a 60, 30 to the right, 60 to the left, you'd be accelerating to the left, and that makes no sense. This 60 is just a threshold, and it doesn't accelerate, right? And now I pulled 50, again, not enough. I have to pull with at least 60 for this thing to start moving. Still not enough, still going up against static friction, and the static friction now instead of 30, it's 50, because it matches my pull. Remember I wrote here that if you're not pulling hard enough, the actual friction is the same as the pulling force, okay? Let me clean that up. And it still doesn't accelerate. Now we're going to move because I'm pulling harder. I'm pulling with a 70, okay? So I can write here, since F is greater than Fs max, this object will accelerate. Acceleration will not be zero. There will be some acceleration to the right. This object will move. Now that it's moving, guess what? Because it's moving, okay, acceleration is not zero, and we're going to be going up against kinetic friction. It's like the friction um, switches instantaneously from one type to the other once you break that barrier. That's what happens. So here you're actually going up kinetic friction. How much friction? Not 70, right? It only counters your friction Friction if you're not moving, going up against static friction, um, but actually the constant number for kinetic friction, that's always the same, um, 40 newtons, okay? The acceleration will not be zero, and we can calculate it using F equals MA. Sum of all forces equals MA. Now, just to draw this real quick, what's happening here is I'm pulling with an F of 70, and I'm going up against now a kinetic friction, since I overcame static friction, of 40, okay? So the sum of all forces will be positive 70 plus negative 40, because they're going opposite directions. I'm saying that going to the right is positive. The mass is 10, and if I solve for acceleration here, I get 30 equals 10A, and I get that the acceleration is three meters per second squared. Okay, and that goes right here. Cool, so hopefully this example helps illustrate uh, basically what it takes to get moving, what happens when you don't move, what happens when you do move. Okay, one last point here, and then I want you guys to try this practice problem. Um, sometimes you're only going to be given one coefficient of friction. And what you're supposed to do is basically assume that that number is just both of them, right? The coefficients of friction could be the same. Um, you just can't have the kinetic be greater than the static, but they could be the same. So if the problem says the coefficient of friction is 0.5, but it doesn't say if it's static or kinetic, you assume that it's both. So in this case, they are the same, right? Um, if two coefficients are given, sometimes you get this, They'll give you two coefficients, but they won't tell you, the problem won't tell you um, which one is which. And then, they're, so they're given but not identified, so you just have to know that the greater one will be the static, okay? The static coefficient of friction. For example, here I'm giving you 0.5 and 0.6. So I'll just let you know, this means that the 0.6 is the static and the 0.5 Oops, I wrote 0.5 here. 0.6 is the static, and the 0.5 is the kinetic, okay? Because the kinetic can't be greater.
than the static. They're either the same or the static is bigger. All right. So I want you guys to try this practice problem out and hopefully you get it.